Well, hello, church. I know it's been a while since I've shared with you, but uh, I have some really great things uh, to share. So I hope you'll take just a minute and listen. Uh, the first announcement that we have for you is that uh, coming up is the night of prayer. And if you don't know what that is, we have several um, friends that are working doing ministry, uh, specifically to Muslims. And during um, the month of May, you have the uh, celebration they have that's called Ramadan. And on that, uh, there's one night that's called the night of power. They believe it's the night that they received, a, that Muhammad received the Quran, the first verses of the Quran. And so they believe that's a night where Allah or God would be speaking to them. And so what we want to do as a church, it's a great night for us to pray that the Holy Spirit would give them dreams and visions and conversations uh, where they would be turned to the gospel, where they would hear the message of Christ and be drawn to those uh, conversation. So uh, we're going to do some great things coming up for that get to pray for some of our friends that are ministering in different places around the world. And so um, Jess Falky is going to be uh, kind of organizing that and putting that together. So uh, if you're interested in that, she'll be the one who's who's contacting you with some some ways that we can cover that time in prayer. And then the other announcement is we get to have a drive in church. So we're really excited about that. We're going to be doing it through the month of May. We know that there are some of you who uh, would need to stay home for various reasons, or even people that have been joining us from a long distance, we want to let you know we'll continue to do Facebook Live. Um, so that will, and it will be just Facebook Live now. So uh, there won't be all the editing. So Nick's done a wonderful job of, of helping us look a little sharper. So I'm very appreciative of that. But uh, man, if you can come to the church, we'll do those services at 1030. And um, what we've got a couple specific guidelines. In fact, I'll, I'll just read you what Green County said. Uh, which would be kind of our local authority, they said religious facilities of any faith may conduct uh, conduct drive-in services with participants gathering in vehicles and participate in the service together by remote means, provided that they stay, that the motor vehicles be uh, parked in every other parking space, at least nine feet apart. That's the first one. The second one is that participants uh, do not interact physically. Uh, number three is that no one exits the vehicle at any time uh, during the service. And then number four is that restrooms are for emergency use only. And then number five is that the participants and the clergy and the staff would remain at least six feet apart. Uh, and that has to refer to those who are um, are helping out with the service, like leading worship and those things. So uh, we want to be submissive to those local authorities. And I know during this time, we're, we're all excited about life kind of returning to normal and um, kind of coming out of the quarantine. You know, on February 2nd, um, President Trump, uh, under the, kind of the advice of the CDC, uh, basically signed something in saying that uh, if you had traveled to a foreign country and you were coming um, back to the United States, there are certain stipulations. In fact, other countries did this also, that if you were traveling to this country, they were going to quarantine you. Um, for a certain amount of time, you know, different countries had different times. Uh, but if you could imagine, I mean, that we're quarantined in some ways and um, we still have some freedoms to get out and get groceries. But if you could imagine what it'd be like to be quarantined in a foreign country. So as excited as we are to have all of the restrictions uh, lifted that we feel like this illness is, you know, at a safe spot. Uh, we're excited about that day. But could you imagine your excitement if you were living in a foreign land? and then being quarantined. And so with that in mind, as excited as we are to see each other, to see our fellow believers, and then even to have family. I know some of you haven't seen your grandkids or grandkids haven't seen their parents, and or I mean their, their grandparents, and you know, all that excitement. Imagine what it'd be like to be a foreigner and be quarantined. And with that in mind, I want you to hear 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. He says, Dear friends, I urge you to live as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul, um, to live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men, whether that be kings or supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to condemn those uh, or to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you would silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as servants of God. I was just thinking in this time that, you know, even though we're quarantined here in our own home country, uh, that there is a sense, a very real sense, that we are foreigners even here 
in America, that we should live as foreigners. And, and so that thought, as excited as you are for us to, to get to see our family, imagine the excitement that we have when we'll get together with the family of God, but even more excitement for us to be with our Heavenly Father, for us to be with Christ. In fact, I mean, think there's no greater treasure in heaven. The greatest thing about heaven is Jesus Christ. In fact, if you took away everything else, and it was just Christ. Uh, it's a great question. Would you still be as excited uh, to go to heaven one day if there were no none of your loved ones there? If, if there was no crystal sea, if there was no streets of gold, if there was no mansion, if it was simply Christ, would you be excited? And I believe if you know who Christ is and you see how wonderful he is, you'd say, oh yes, that's the one thing I'm truly excited about is to see my Savior. Uh, so Peter tells us, live as aliens, knowing that even though we're, this is the country we call home, we have another home, a truer home, you could say, and a truer king that we pledged allegiance to, and we're excited uh, for the day we get to see him. Uh, here's what Peter says. He gives uh, four things uh, about how to live as aliens. Number one, he says, abstain from sinful desires. Number two, live good lives, such good lives that people would glorify God. And then number three, he says, Submit yourself to local authorities. What, what a thought that is. And then live as free men, but don't use your freedom as a way to cover up evil. Uh, church and friends, man, we love you guys. We're so excited to see you. Let me say a word of prayer for you. And then we'll um, see you this Sunday. Uh, we'll do our Facebook Live at 1030. And then next Sunday, May 10th, Mother's Day, we'll gather there at the church. Uh, we'll do Facebook Live if you can join us that way. Man, we're so excited for what God's doing even during this time. Let me pray. Father, thank you that you're a God that's at work. And Father, I thank you for the day that you bring us to our true home. That for those who have trusted Christ as their Savior and Lord, that you have a true home prepared for us. Father, that you'll, you'll draw us to be with you. Father, I thank you for Christ as our treasure. We love you, Father. Would you help grow our hearts where we see you? as the true treasure. It's in Christ's holy name we pray. We love you, Lord. Amen.